Coach Blossom C. Brown from the Jubilee debate, trans liberals versus trans conservatives. And what's brewing? Coach Blossom C. Brown. Jubilee trans reaction. And aunties, do you give a damn? So get your coach ready for my nowhere T report. Welcome to Minority Report. It's Auntie Carell. It's Auntie Dewan. And it's Auntie Jarell. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. And we have another great episode this week that I'm extremely excited about. Yeah. Because, hey, again, <laughs> we <laughs> booked Blossom before all the, the Jubilee shit. So let's get that. Let's get that <laughs> situated first. So don't be like, oh, the auntie's just trying to get picked. Nope. No ho. Blossom and us, we've been seeing each other. <laughs> <laughs> so just got to say that shit at the, the, the joke because, you know, haters want to hate. Uh, <laughs> but let's give her the, the, the proper, and hold on, let me pull up my notes here, the proper welcome here. So we have the activist, the life coach, the astrologer, the producer, the tarot card reader, and what I am now calling her, the great debater. <laughs> Blossom C. Brown is in the place to be. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, y'all. What's going what the... on? What's going on? Y'all know I'm so happy to be here with all of y'all. Vibing high. High Aww. frequency. Let's get into it. <laughs> hey, yes. I know that's right. I know that's right. And how, how are you doing today? Like, all is well? Because we know it's been crazy. I've been reading some of them comments in the, that, that video, and we'll get to that. But how, how's, your, how's your mind, your mental, your spirit, your physical? Yeah, my mind, my mental, my spiritual is really good. I'm um, healing, I'm navigating, and I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm just in a grateful place, just grateful for just being here with y'all. Being in a black space right now, are, it's just so healing to my heart, my soul, and my spirit. And so thank y'all for allowing me to Aww. be here with all of y'all, sharing this space, honey, because... Who people be trying it. They try a black trans woman, honey. Hey. They be trying it. <laughs> Let me, like, like it's a full-time job, okay? <laughs> they, on, like they ain't got shit else it. to do. To, get, to gather their lives. They raggedy lives. <laughs> 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 but uh, anyway, no, we're, we're super excited to have you, boo, because, because we see you. And then, like you yeah. say, it's a safe space. Talk about what you want to talk about. Talk about what you don't. It'd be like, nope, I ain't saying that shit. And it is what it is because we need more spaces like this. And that's why we personally love having our podcast to, to provide yes. spaces like that for our community that look like us, sound like us, act like us, et cetera. <laughs> so, because we know people ain't out yes. there checking for us. And so we got to make sure that we're checking for each other and we, Honey. and we are that's being right. there and showing up for each other. Right. Cause <laughs> the world out here, they, if they could erase us, if they could ship us off to the moon, Mars, or Pluto, they would in a heartbeat. They they honestly would in a heartbeat. But you know what? The problem of it is, is that if we, let's say we did get shipped over there, it would be so lit. They would be trying to get in. Look, they, they gave us the worst pieces of the pig, and we made soul right. food. They gave us the worst damn neighborhoods. And we turn that shit into like Liddyville. So wherever we go, they're gonna be always checking for us because we all we're the ones that are bringing it. To, right. We're the ones that are bringing it to the table. Can you imagine how unseasoned this place would be? Oh, <laughs> like kind of like a Taylor so Swift concert. <laughs> Look, not like a. Oh, man, I mean, <laughs> raisins and everything, girl. Just Ooh. like <laughs> y'all can have all of that. Y'all can have all of that. like shit. Pluto sounded quite nice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the views alone. <laughs> oh, oh, but we, 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 we kind of hinted at it. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> No, 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 you're good, you're good. Okay. <laughs> we kind of hinted at it. Like, so if you don't know what we're talking about and why Blossom is on everybody's mouths, <laughs> is 
She was recently on the Jubilee Trans Conservatives vs. Trans Liberals Middle Ground episode. And there were, there was one particular person that was on that. We ain't going to say names because they don't even deserve it. But um, that really kind of has a platform that might not be very <laughs> conducive to the trans community, A, but to any community, B. And, huh? and the comment sections have been quite crazy and things like that. But how, do, how did you, I guess even before we go and dissect the actual episode, like how did you even get involved with it and things like that? Yeah, so, you know, last year I did an episode called Trans Women versus Conservative Women where trans women and conservative women were just debating to see if we could find middle ground. And that was my first time actually on that set and working with Jubilee. And the first time it was great. Um, I had a great time. Um, we debated our different viewpoints, but me and the conservative women, we got along great. One of the conservative girls, uh, the young Gen Zer had a conservative podcast. And so originally she wanted me to come on with trans women. And when I say originally that day on set, because she's actually going around screenshotting incomplete receipts. So let me make sure I'm actually saying what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed to actually go on there. And so honestly, I felt, and let me make sure I say this, anything that I feel, oh, are y'all still there? Yep, yep, we're still Hello? here. Yep. Okay, okay. Everybody's screen like blocked out. Okay, I got it. And yep. let me make sure I say this. <laughs> let me make sure I say this. Anything that I say is my opinion, my personal views, or whatnot can't be policed by anybody. But I felt blindsided because um, I got text messages that said that uh, a trans man was going to be there, and so I was like, you know what? I try to keep my word. Let me go keep my word. I get there. And I'm a person, because I'm a Libra, so I'm all about balance. The platform has to be balanced where I feel the debate could be really good. And I just felt like because me and this person had two different viewpoints, we weren't really a match for debating. And that conservative podcast was going to lean more in their favor anyway because they're conservative. And so I was just like, yeah, this isn't going to work. But what happened was conservatives were hyping up this other trans woman who shall be nameless. To debate me and I actually agreed I thought we were more yeah. compatible to debate <laughs> and so what ended up happening was this other platform reached out months later and was just like there's someone that wants to come on wants you to come on the platform and debate her and I was like oh is it this person they were just like yeah and so I was like okay I'll debate her but it took her a week to get back in response to them and so what ended up happening was I ended up looking on the platform before I gave my answer and there was this woman on there breaking her NDA on which celebrity she slept with. And I said, well, I said to myself, my community is not going to go with this. And so what ended up happening was I ended up saying no to the platform, but I actually told him to tell her to get in my DM and we can find a more mutual platform. Well, about almost a year later goes by, I get a call from one of the producers at Jubilee wanting me to come on and be a part of this episode. And I knew then it was the individual that wanted to debate me because the episode was titled Trans Conservatives versus Trans Liberals. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like, I've been on this platform before. It was great. I had a great time. You know what I mean? That was that. Um, mm -hmm. I've mentioned this before. They do typecast. Um, and so oh, this sure particular person. Huh? I said, I'm sure they do. They, they want them views. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they type. They definitely typecast, and this particular person has issues with trans activists and non-binary people in general. And so when I get to set, I realize I'm the only black person there. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Now, I'm the type of black person. I'm used to going in mostly white, uh, rich spaces. So I'm mm -hmm. used to always being one of the only black people in the room. But this particular person was very combative on set. She was very disrespectful, very unprofessional. She had an agenda. Uh, I tried to speak, didn't want to speak. Um, she was just really bitter and very nasty. Um, and, you know, for her platform, she does tend to make reaction videos to non-binary people. So that's just like her whole thing. She's, in my opinion, she's mm -hmm. she's very bullying. Like, she, that's just what yeah, she likes to get off thing. on. And so we're trying to, like, debate. This girl is like, y'all don't even know me. Y'all don't even know me, da-da-da-da-da or whatever. And so they ended up 
cutting out a lot of things and there were things going on on set that people don't see so a lot of these people that have their own opinions about the debate or whatever i have to give grace because they don't know what actually happened behind the scenes but what happened was there's a part on there where i'm telling her to keep it cute that's what everybody's going off of or whatever i was like because she because the girl yelled xanax and i was like i was like girl keep it cute keep it real cute because i know you have your bodyguard outside well the bodyguard was actually her husband and I wasn't saying that as if I'm going to beat this girl up. I'm saying it is because you need to be more professional. Stop being unprofessional. Like, I know you got people outside or whatever. And the thing well. is, she twisted around to make it seem like I was threatening her. But I should be more of the one more concerned because it's like you have somebody outside when you're not supposed to have anybody on set, first of all. And then, two, because I'm the only black person, it's my safety that would be more at risk. And so... Um, this, 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 this person, in my opinion, who's very vile, actually, you know, after the episode was filmed or whatever, went to her base and tried to make it seem like they were going to edit things in our favor, the liberals favor. And so just being on set with her, it was just really crazy. The other trans conservatives I didn't really have a problem with, um, you know, being the only black person there, I know when it comes to debating, there's a certain strategy. I became the priority voice, one of the priority voices, me and the non-binary person. So I felt like I was representing a lot of people. I was representing a lot of black trans people. I was representing black people. I was representing people yeah. who just were not there, you know what I mean? Not there in that space. And so mm -hmm. I debated the best that I could with my political viewpoints. I think conservatives, some conservatives are mad at the fact that I said, conservatives have a basic level understanding of what transness is. Let me clarify that. For me, when I think of conservatives, I think more of your everyday conservatives like Candace Owens, um, Ben Shapiro, and a lot of Republicans in like political power, because that's what I understand. I wasn't really talking about everyday conservative people, but I can understand why right. people are getting in their feelings about, but I still stand by what I say. Uh, I'm not going to backtrack <laughs> on what I say. <laughs> Let me make well, that very clear. That's not what I said. But let me I also say what I said. Yeah, let me and just let clarify. The record show, but, the, but the key it, is, let them back. And let let and, the record um, show that it is it is historically not um, in the favor of conservatives to be spending time with people of diverse backgrounds to begin with. Period. So. Mm -hmm. The so notion hard. of and it. the idea that there are conservatives that are up in arms because they aren't, um, they don't understand the the trans experience is goddamn it a fact because you don't you're not in these you're not in these streets not at all mm. and don't care to be in these streets and yeah, when i tell y'all and when i tell y'all in my honest opinion i don't think the trans conservatives had a rebuttal for a lot of the mic drop moments that i had and there was this one mic drop moment where i had to sit face to face with this girl and tell her that her whiteness is destroying my community um, as mm -hmm. a black person, a lot of conservatives were like, oh, why are you using the race car for everything or whatever? First of all, I wasn't using the race car for everything. I was speaking from the black experience because that's all I can give you because I'm black and because I'm trans. And I'm trying to let y'all know that certain things are going to look different for our community and for our experience. This wasn't to take away from them and calling them racist or anything like that because that was, that was not it. It was not... A host I was not coming from a place of hostility or combativeness. And, right. you know, people just, I think this debate, believe it or not, gave certain people permission to be very anti-Black. Because I didn't realize this debate was going to catch international attention the way it has, especially from international trans people. But I've seen some of the most hated hatred. I've had racists be in my inbox. Um, DMing me like the most vile mm -hmm. things, anti-black people who were not on set thinking that they can judge me and the way that I act or whatever. No, I debated very well. You're not going to gaslight me into thinking I did not. Um, I will still stand by what I say. Um, we, we have to work through this anti-blackness or, or whatnot. And, you know, that, that, that debate really happened because I said yes to this person's challenge to debate. And I'm actually glad that I did not go on the other platform mm -hmm. that I didn't think was good, I, that we went on Jubilee, because Jubilee is a very powerful platform. I know most time right. they lean more conservative, 
But I don't know if it's really that they lean conservative or they just have more of a conservative audience. Um, and so, you know, it's like I've, I've been on, like I said before, I've been on that platform before. And even the first time they hated me, even in the comment section, like they, they just don't like me. And I, and I don't know if I have very far left political views or whatnot, but I just, no. it's, I, I feel it's like, like it's, yeah, it's just like, I feel like it's just, again, like a lot of times there's a tokenism that occurs a lot of times in these spaces that rather is top of mind for them or maybe subconsciously. And I I don't know one way or the the other, but it, 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 it happens more often than people realize even outside of just like entertainment and YouTube and things like that, just like day to day life. There's always this one. It's like, okay, let's at least get one gay person. Let's at least get one black person. Let's get, and it's always just this one, one. And like you said, you almost feel like you have to speak up for an entire race, for an entire community, for an entire gender identity, whatever it may be that I don't even think people realize a, the pressure of that, but then B they want to get up in arms when you do say something about race, despite it being our experience. We don't know. We, I, I'm not Asian. I'm not Arab. I'm not. I ain't none of these not things. Latina. The and, reality, and, the and reality it of it is horrible. I'm sorry. The reality of it is, is anti-blackness is doing exactly that. It's, it's, telling black people that you cannot use race as a factor in your experience or your viewpoints. And that is the very definition of erasing blackness from the conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. And it happens in our own community too, because I did see quite a few comments, even from people that are black saying, Oh, I hate when you say the race card and this and that, but it's just like, you had me on you. You call me (laughs) who is black (laughs) and trans to be on this great debate of set. And what the hell yeah. else you think I'm going to say? <laughs> and especially when yeah. like there's blind spots for blind spots for those that do not look like me because they might not associate with the community that I am a part of. So there's going to be some Correct. part that it happens all the time that they're going to say some anti-black shit and we got to call that shit out in the moment or it just gets swept underneath the rug for that next debate for the next person to feel like they can't say shit. <laughs> Yeah, because you know what, though? It was a lot of black conservatives that was doing that. And, you know, in my personal opinion, I think black conservatives are an oxymoron, to be quite honest with you. But I feel like until I'm in a place where I can debate black conservatives and get more of an understanding of why they choose to be conservative Mm -hmm. or whatnot, like, I I won't understand that level of, of why they do that, why their political views are in that. But even looking at some of the reaction videos, it's just like people were talking about the fact that I've gone to the White House and I've I've got a resume or whatever, but they're missing the fact of what I was saying, blackness and whiteness. It's like, of course, if you are white passing or white adjacent, you're going to go more into other spaces. Like, don't try to gaslight Mm -hmm. what I've gone through because those events like the CNN Town Hall, uh, the White House. All of those mm-hmm. things were places of injustice. When I was on Ellen and Caitlyn Jenner's show, I was going through an injustice. I couldn't get into nursing school. One. And then at the mm-hmm. CNN town hall, they erased black trans women from even being able to participate in the debate. <clears throat> like, it's just like her, her talking points were minute. And the thing is, She's really good at, and, and again, this is my opinion, she's really good at lying, getting ahead of the PR and twisting things because I do believe that, you know, I, I just think it was, a, it was a power move, but I know who I am and people know who I am. I know my good heart, my good spirit, and that's not going to change. And I don't have to sit up here and prove my actions to other people. I think there are people especially uh, black conservatives who are only screenshotting half receipts. They're not screenshotting the whole thing. And I'm like, I don't have to prove anything because these are not my people. People who are anti-black and transphobic and who, who really don't like me. I even had liberal progressives say, Oh, I'm with, I'm with um, that person. And I'm just like, okay, so why do you feel the need to get in my DM to tell me that? If you're with that person, who cares? So I just blocked, blocked, and blocked. I set my comments to limit it because, number one, y'all not going to worry my peace. 
Mm-hmm. Y'all not gonna That's break my peace. I'm glad you did that. Because you ain't gonna about to do that. <laughs> yeah, because it's yeah, because it's like the view, and it's so funny because Sunny Hostin, who's on the view, she's actually my birthday twin. And the thing oh, is, it's like hey, when you do things, you leave it at the table. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Which really but I, I, but I, before but, I even like get oh go or uh, quickly, I just want to say sorry even though we didn't do nothing but i just want to make sure that you know sorry for you having to take that pressure on and that weight of the crazies of the world because it's not fair because it's just like these things and the the thing i that sucks quite frankly out of it is like the 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 hopefully the intent of the 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 whole episode was supposed to be at least explaining the viewpoints and helping those grow and educate those that like don't have the education to see what the trans community is going through and discussing those points and i think that's kind of been missed now throughout the whole thing where it's just like okay it has millions of views but no one's talking about like oh i learned something from watching that or oh maybe my my viewpoint maybe changed a little bit from that and, and that's the sucky thing and yes i know jubilee gets the views and things like that so they're happy with the millions of views but for for the lgbtqia plus community and specifically the black trans community i feel like it was an opportunity lost because they're not really willing to to learn and hear the issues that are at hand for the community. So that's what I, I, I feel after, because I went down a rabbit hole, like I'd like watch that, and then I was like, I watched the Transparency podcast, mm-hmm. and then I watched a little bit of Old Girls podcast, just mm-hmm. to try to see has anyone learned anything, and no one was talking about like, oh, I took this out of it, and da da da. It's just more about the combativeness of it, and I'm like, damn, that is such a missed opportunity for such a platform that yes. literally goes out to millions of people. Right, because you'd have to do You're it. You're so right. right. Like you, there's so much you could have done. You could have done with your day, and the fact that you took the time to to do that and to share a perspective with with honestly a lot of people that needed to hear what you had to say, but simply just didn't want to hear what you had to say. Right. That's because, right. And hear like even what said, they had to say, but it's just like if your point, if your viewpoint is just to be combative, that that's not a debate. That's just trying to prove a point. And you're not hearing and you're not listening and you're not comprehending mm-hmm. and, and receiving. And, and so that makes other people not want to comprehend and receive and things like that. And that's the, you know, that the piece that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. like no one's going to be able to receive this now because they just like the, the moriness of it, the, the Jerry Springerness of it. And, and that wasn't hopefully the intent from like, even like the producers behind the scene. Um, and I mean, they, it is what it is probably from their viewpoint, they on to the next video, but I, I almost feel like for, at least for us, is there something, was there an overall message that you wanted to get out to communities mm-hmm. that was missed, um, in that, that, that particular episode? You know, when I look at, <clears throat> when I look at the overall picture of what happened within this debate. People who feel like they have to lie to get ahead and people who feel like they have to try to destroy my character and all of the things or whatever, I make an impact. And I don't. I only have 18,500 something followers on Instagram compared to people who have millions of followers and I make a deep impact. And I want to tell people, you don't need a large social media following to make an impact on somebody. You know, I receive a lot of hatred, a lot of negative comments or whatever like that in order for us to have a community conversation. And like y'all, because I've been listening to other people who've been talking about this, a lot of people were left confused. They had more questions than answers because there's a lot of nuance in the topics. I personally think that the prompts could have been written better. Um, Like for me, like one one of the prompts was minors should not get top surgery. Well, when we talk about minors um, in in the health field, you can't consent to getting top surgery until you're around 16 anyway. So it's like mm-hmm. anybody that's below the age of 16 and we're having a conversation around them, that's intellectually dishonest. And I think that's where the trans conservatives were trying to make their talking points, which was didn't make sense to me. And I had to be really careful with that because I'm not a trans man. So I can't give too much insight other than that. And I do think, and I was reading some of the, the, the react, I was listening to some of the reaction videos and someone had to kindly remind me, you know, I said something about, I think when it comes to trans men, you know, I'm sorry, trans kids or whatever, uh, that are getting these gender affirming surgeries. I was like, well, you know, they have to get permission from their parents. 
<clears throat> someone kindly reminded me not everybody feels safe to go to their parents or not everybody has that relationship with their parents. Yeah. And so I take that as constructive criticism, like, okay, you're so right about that. And I need to remember that next time because a lot of trans people that watch are very passionate about these topics and in and, and these conversations. And so I want to make mm-hmm. sure that the next time I'm on a debate stage that I am being more responsible and caring and understanding of where they're coming from. And I do think there's more opportunities. I think with the with the white trans guy, uh, the one in the glasses, you know, mm-hmm. there was a point when I was talking about trans-led organizations and I was talking about people's privilege. They were thinking I was talking about their white privilege. I was talking about the fact if you don't have to get any services from trans-led organizations, you are in a place of privilege. And that mm-hmm. does include mm-hmm. me as well. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But I do think what happened was he said something about being born with HIV and having drug ad- addict, a drug addict parents, that it really opened up a conversation more for black and brown trans men to come in and let him know that when it comes to access to treatment, he does have more of a privilege over them. And see, that's not something I should be doing or, or saying. I think that leaves the door of conversation for our black and brown and indigenous trans brothers uh, to come on in and talk about it. So there's definitely more opportunities there. Um, <clears throat> when I look at the whole debate altogether, I'm so proud of myself because I really studied for that debate and I really, really focused on what was important. People thought it was anecdotal. It's like, well, you're not black. Half y'all are not black to begin with, number one. Number two, yep, y'all are yep. just jaded at the fact that it was a black trans woman that said it. Like, how dare a black trans woman come in there and command space. Because ultimately, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I commanded the space, and I thought it was really important because I knew I would be speaking for certain groups of people, especially trans people who are in grassroots and nonprofit work. Mm -hmm. I find it really interesting um, when it comes to social and political issues, especially that take a public stage, uh, because people don't often realize that it's serving two purposes. You know, they always think of it as, you know, debate content, right? That, oh, this is a debate. This The end result is some exchange of ideas and different perspectives, hopefully finding some, you know, as, you know, some put it, common ground on some issues, you know, maybe too far apart on some other issues. But they're looking at it from the pure, like, the pure clinical definition of what a debate is supposed to be about. Completely overshadowing the fact that there's also debate entertainment. And so... I think as that. people that have are afforded the ability to have a platform and are invited to these tables where these conversations are happening, there is this inner debate that has to happen for those individuals like yourself, you know, as to reconciling, A, I know this isn't going to be a real debate. Like it's, we're going to be talking about issues, but this is really about debate entertainment and there's going to be baiting involved. There's going to be a bunch of misconstruing, gaslighting, all these kind of tactics for the purpose of entertainment. Why? Because these platforms want views. That's ultimately what they want. They want the views. So it's, it's, it's interesting the kind of debating that one has to do as to do I participate in this? Is this going to give me the platform that that I can at least touch some people. I might not be touching everybody. I might not be reaching where where everybody reaching the vast majority of folks. But if I could share a perspective that is true and authentic to my experience that also resonates with people who are also going through the same things, then that could be justification enough to participate in these. I think that's one very interesting point. I think the other thing about it, and I love to understand, you touched on this a little bit, but I love to understand what does what does it take to prepare for these kind of conversations and activities? And then what do you do to post care after these things are happening? Now Ooh. that you've gone through this kind of viral <clears throat> experience. <clears throat> I love that. So, you know, I learned the first time I was on that show that it's blind debating. We don't know the prompts ahead of time. So you just kind of have to study the different areas where you think they may talk about it. So for me, I, I studied sports, I studied education, I studied um, just like basic, like just the basic trans experience, um, you know what I mean? And just different experiences and what I've gone through and just trying to see how I can implement that on there. Um, Cause a lot of it is <clears throat> you could debate facts or your experience. That's pretty much the two things 
that you can do. And the thing about the experience piece is you can't really police other people's experience because I think one one middle ground thing was the research in the medical field. Like I knew when we had those types of prompts, I couldn't police other people's trans experience around that. Um, and in research, <clears throat> it doesn't matter about your political views uh, because in research, you're not allowed to have biases and political views are that. And so I felt like me and and, and um, the white trans girl that was in it or whatever, we reached middle ground with that. Now, my post self-care after that, um, I've just learned to detach from the debate. I had to detach from it altogether. And mainly because people were attacking me for my views. But, and I think at one point, as I was looking at the comments, it was starting to gaslight and brainwash me a little bit. But then I had to realize something. When people were posting certain things, it was me having those mic drop moments. And I was thinking to myself, Blossom, you really made a hell of an impact and you need to take that. And so for me, talking, having more conversations with my Black friends around this and being able to go outside and get some fresh air and being able to just clear my mind, body, soul, and spirit of that has been so beautiful. And I think... Part of my self-care right now is actually being here with all of you, being in a beautiful mm. black space with my black siblings and in, 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 in this melanin and this black power. And I just love the fact that I'm sitting here that, 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 you know, like when I did that last podcast, that was more of a cleansing, my opinions and feelings of me cleansing the situation or whatever. But this is like that first space where I, I'm not, name dropping or anything like that and it's just been so beautiful and so healing and i and i just want to say thank y'all again for just having this, this this space in general because you don't know how healing it is for me um i've been attacked for about six seven days now and each day as i get up it's it's it gets better but then sometimes it just like pulls me back and i have a lot of support around me yes but i think it's just really disappointing because i thought other trans people would support me, but it just really awakened a lot of anti-blackness, racism, and other isms put in place. But now I consciously see that blossom you were placed in this situation for divine reason. And so wow. here it is. These may not be your people per se, your people, because in the trans community, there's always this thing where people feel like they have to be complicit to bad behavior. Um, and I'm not that type of person. Like, I'm from Mississippi. You know what I mean? Like, I'm from the Deep South. I I don't conform to a lot of the things that people put in place. But, you know, I'm so grateful to be me. And I just, I'm, I, 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 I'm just grateful. Question for you. And outside of even this Jubilee stuff, we've seen a recent time, and it happens all the time, but, like, we've just seen a couple moments go viral of, black men attacking black trans women. And we, okay. we say it often on our podcast, we're like, even though we go through stuff as black gay men, we know that we still have in the community a privilege to look out after others that don't have as much privilege yes. as us. How do we moving forward help as black gay men, the black trans community to ensure relationships get better, better communicate, whatever it may be. And how can we protect you better? And what do you all need from us? I love this particular question and I was trying to figure out how can I address this in this particular space and I'm so glad you just asked the question. So here's the thing. And I've talked about this before with other trans uh, like with other influencers especially. You know, there are black queer men that are benefiting off of transphobia. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, it's like whenever there's a trans issue at hand, there are some black queer men that feel like they have to be transphobic because they know it's going to bring views to their platform. It's going to make their algorithm go up because they know trans people are going to come over and defend themselves. Wow. And they love being controversial. And, you know, there's That's a black nasty. queer person that I'm talking about now in my head because we've had this conversation with them and, you know, they have a, they have a platform. And we've actually had one-on-one -on -one conversations together. We've actually gone to dinner and had the conversation, especially around the whole Dave Chappelle thing. <clears throat> because, you know, there were some black queer people that didn't understand why we were there to protest. Uh, and we actually protested on my 35th birthday, uh, which was about almost two years ago. 
And my thing is, it's like, for the black queer men who don't profit off of transphobia, I think holding those gay men accountable, black gay men accountable, is a start. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a start in the right direction. And I think together collectively, we have to really begin to build on each other because I know there are certain things that y'all experience that I may not experience that I should be an accomplice to. And, you know, like accompliceship has to go both ways. And so I need to make sure that I'm standing up for my black queer brothers when I need to as well. And I'm going to make sure I hold myself more accountable to that. But I do think that understanding that white supremacy is not going to get any of us anywhere. And being in proximity to whiteness in some fashion, shape, or form, that's not going to move the needle towards blackness. And in fact, I'm a person that believes we have to figure out a way to trick the system that we know doesn't work for us to begin with in order to build the black wealth that we need. Because obviously, the resources and the access that we need is in that white supremacist like um, arena or whatnot. And it's just kind of like, and I'm sitting up here thinking to myself, like, how do we trick a system that we know don't give two shits about us and being able to gather other people in to get the resources or whatnot and still be able to build black wealth on a system that, again, is trying to keep us oppressed, but we're actually getting over on because we're getting what we need. And you know what I mean? Like I'm very strategic yeah. like that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, some people don't understand that. Some people think that's a little problematic, but I'm just kind of like, but that's kind of the reality of it. Because even when you think about in history, a lot of white producers, and I, and I want to talk about television right quick. If you really think mm -hmm. about it, a lot of white producers or white crea uh, TV creators or whatever, like Ryan Murphy and Norman Lear have profited off of black stories for so long. When you mm -hmm. think about Norman Lear, you had All in the Family. What was the spinoff of All in the Family? The Jeffersons. Jefferson. Jeffersons. His second show, uh, Maude. What was the spinoff of Maude? Good Times. Good Times. So, like, you know what I mean? It's like, there's there's such black wealth in our black storyteller, and that's why I appreciate so much. And I know you just had Angelica Ross on recently, who I love so much. Like, her story, when she talked about, like, what she went through on America Horror Story, I went through, I went through something similar with the Jubilee debate. Mm -hmm. Being the only yeah, black person yeah. on set and having to deal with a combative person. And so, mm -hmm. like, when Angelica spoke, she was speaking for her experience, yes, but she was also speaking for black trans women like myself. And so it's just kind of like, you know, this is where we need our black queer brothers to kind of come in and just be like, you know, sis, yeah, I'm sorry. And, and, and you know, just be just a light and comfort. That's and really all that we need. Absolutely. And, and offer that space, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, <clears throat> it, you were talking about like, <clears throat> kind of like playing the game, right? Like that white supremacy game, <laughs> like we already know that we got to play the game. <laughs> But we should not be running that game within our own community against each other to play the game. Yeah. That should not I be agree. part of the strategy, right? The strategy should be like, how do we move us as a whole? Because the moment that one of us step out of line, that person becomes power to them to separate and divide us even more, right? Like it, now more than ever, the conversation of unity means so much more because the moment that they say, well, this black person does this, that right. gives them all the justification that they they feel necessary to say however they feel, do whatever they feel, et cetera. So creating space and making sure that our differences can can exist, right? Without it being a a pissing contest, without it being a mine's is worse than yours, just it could just all be reality. <laughs> because it is all of our reality, <laughs> not a competition, right? Yeah. Trickle down, Ooh, that's trickle so down true. discrimination that's so is true. live and well in the United States. Let's let's be clear. In the world, and, girl. Like, you know, like when you yeah. really think about it, this whole kind of concept of trickle down discrimination, like it's been in a, it's been in our community ever since they brought our black asses over into in those boats. Like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there have been these divides within the community. And if anybody's ever read, you know, the um, uh, you know, the book on war, they know that one of the number one divisive or one of the number one success tools for winning a war is divide and conquer. So the more that you can 
trick your enemy into divvying up their communities into smaller factions to fight amongst each other, they become easier to beat. They become easier to control. They become easier to manipulate. And we be falling, when I say we, the collective we across all these identities of historically <coughs> underrepresented uh, and marginalized communities play into this bullshit of this us versus them within our own community to our own detriment. And you see it day in and day out. Because mm. the sad thing is yeah. like, for some reason, we, we, and again, the, the collective we, not us, we, <laughs> we, for some reason, like, want to be seen so drastically by white folks. And, and, and part of it is just how they've kind of manipulated the system for so long that once we are, we want to hold on to that, even if it's at the detriment of our community. And that's the weird psycholog psychological game warfare that they've played on us for so long. Even though, like we said earlier, we the ones that's dope. We the ones that's pushing culture. We the ones that's fly. We the ones doing culinary shit. We the ones that are doing, doing so much stuff that we're contributing to humanity. Yet we, we yeah. constantly saying, oh, but I want to be them. Bitch, no, they want to be us. They want to be you, us. Like, figure that shit out. <laughs> that's right. God, no, that's please. right. They want to profit off our culture. But can I tell you something, though? And I was listening to you, and I want to wake this up, too. You know, we have to start giving ourselves and giving each other opportunities because ultimately, mm -hmm. since I became an activist almost 10 years ago, I've had to navigate a lot of rich white spaces because... Black folks, like you and I, were not giving me opportunity. They were not giving me opportunity. Mm -hmm. And even as a spiritualist, I find myself, even in like Black spiritual spaces, I'm often left out. Mm -hmm. I'm often not invited to the table. I'm not invited to collaborate with other Black spiritualists. And it's just kind of weird, but it's like, but white people buy readings from me and white people buy services from me. And it's just kind of like, you know, how do we address that as well, too? And I've learned to use these predominant black spaces as much more healing spaces. Cause mm -hmm. and I and I don't like I think it's because, you know, I've worked with the human rights campaign when I first became an activist and you know, I was on Caitlin's show and so I, I navigated that very well and I benefited to a certain degree. And you know, I've had to change my views around this more previously um or whatnot and and you know I, I had this conversation with one of my dear black um queer influencer friends like how we're always one of the only black people in the room uh and we were talking about tokenization earlier it's like you know yeah we may be the only black person in the room but like how do we make it benefit for us yeah right mm -hmm. how do we benefit from it how can we be able to stretch to other people and that's why i've been intentional on making sure i'm bringing other people in the room. And the thing is for me, because you know I'm a Capricorn rising, she's a Capricorn <laughs> rising, Libra Sun, Gemini Moon, Capricorn rising. When I bring other people into the room, yes, you are a representation of me, but you also have your own individuality. And I do not yes. police that. Mm -hmm, yes. I want you to be at your best. I want you to thrive. I don't feel like you're taking anything away from me if I get you in that space. If you get more attention, more fame, more recognition. I am okay with that. Come on now. I'm just grateful to have been a bridge and a light to be able to help you get to where you need to go. And that's what being a life coach is. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Like you're not giving people the answer. You're coaching people on how to get to their answer and to get to their yep. right. Yep. And so, yeah, I just want to make sure I bring that into the table because, you know, some people see me in spaces and think, Oh, I got it down pack. Oh, I'm hogging the seats and all the things or whatever. It's like, y'all don't know my struggle. Y'all don't know what I'm going through in there. Y'all don't know about the anti-blackness and the transphobia and the microaggressions and all of the things I'm going through. But I'm putting my bodily autonomy on the line for a lot of these things that honestly don't care about me back or don't even care about my existence. But I know that I'm divinely called to do the work that I'm doing and that I'm being aligned with the people that I'm being aligned with. Yeah. That's a word. Mm, I felt that. Word. I really did. I really did. Because, <laughs> you know, some people don't like to see other people win. 
Like some people feel like they missed out and they go to the, well, why me? How come this person gets to have all those super? And they really be thinking the grass is green on the other side. But baby, let me tell you, some of this stuff that that goes behind the scenes that people don't know about, I will happily pass this shit to you. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you're so good, baby, <laughs> have it yourself. There okay? you go. And then holler at me later. Because let me tell you, you be singing a different <laughs> tune. Pull up a seat, baby. Come here. Pull up a seat. Right. There's a lot. There is a lot of. Um, there are a lot of people out there that want the glory, and they want the recognition. They want the fame. They, it, it, it's for them. It's performative because their end goal isn't truly activism. Their end goal is entertainment. Mm. It's likes. It's personal and and self promotion. And that is a very different kind of thing. And one of the things that I appreciate about you, Blossom, is that. Again, you're in this for the activism. You're in this for the other people. You're putting yourself on the line on behalf of, of the others. And so if people have issues with the space that you are occupying, it doesn't necessarily mean that there wasn't blood, sweat, and tears. Um, and and to, get to, the, to get to that spaces. And it doesn't also mean that those spaces, those spaces are plentiful to occupy. Like, those things mm -hmm. can be mutually non-exclusive or exclusive, mutually exclusive of each, of one another. <laughs> and I think one of the things that attracts people to you is your ability to not only communicate a very clear point of view, but also to show up and participate in these spaces, knowing full well what these spaces are all about. It's not just about somebody who has an attitude or somebody who has a, a thought and an idea and just are just expressing that, you know, like you see a lot of these reaction videos. They're just, they're reacting to somebody that actually has a point of view and that's putting themselves and their perspective on the line. And so if you want to be in that space, you got to take all the things that come along with that if you're truly going to be in that space. Otherwise, you're not going to be booked and you're not going to be no. busy and you'll continue to be doing reaction videos because Ooh. you aren't going to be those individuals <laughs> that are driving the culture forward. Well, guess what? Go ahead and do a reaction video to this episode, then, ho. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, they don't do it anyway. Because listen, y'all, I bet you, I bet you, y'all are going to get so many views on this because conservatives are going to be trying to see what I said. They're going to be looking at this interview, so y'all might as well go and get ready. The number's about to go up because they're looking to follow me. I'm going to let Handy handle that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be like, but you know what, though? It's like, you know what? Let them come into an all-black space. I dare you to come into an all-black space and hear what's really going on. Because, again, on that set... She called, I don't know if I told y'all this, she called me ugly. No, she I, actually I saw called that, me ugly. They edited it like, out. Oof. Yeah, they edited it out. And a lot of, and I'm actually glad they did because it was about my trauma there. And I just knew that when she called me ugly, it was more deeply rooted. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I, when white women were tagging me and her in that anti black uh, video or whatnot, it made sense why she's coming after me why she's lying on me and why she's mm -hmm. doing the things. And it's almost like anti-blackness is domestic terrorism in the trans community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, is what it felt like. But I'm still here, and I'm gonna be here. I know that's right, babe. Let me tell I'm you, I'm gonna be. Here. It would have been it an episode be of Bad Girls Club if I was on that bitch. Cause, honey, I'm telling you, <laughs> where because are we? Are now, we debating? Are we, we arguing? Clowning. Are we fighting? What are we doing? <laughs> let's get it. Let's right. get is it we finished or is we done? <laughs> and see, she gonna and see, she gonna figure out, and they gonna, and this girl gonna figure out how. Like taking what y'all said and trying to figure out, oh, I'm inciting violence. Da, 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 da. I never Nobody even knew who this that. human being was opinion, until Wait, this. who are we I talking about this again? Existed. A non motherfucking <laughs> factor. A non motherfucking factor. That's the name. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. <laughs> well, you know what? Enough about that that thing. We're gonna have us some little fun because yes. there's been actually a lot of hot topics out there that we, we yeah, just haven't I'm excited about been talking part. about. So we're gonna play a little hey aunties, do y'all give a damn? Oh, <laughs> so here we go. We ain't played this one in a minute. All right, let's see. Which one do I wanna do first? <laughs> actually I know which one I wanna do first. <laughs> I can't stand you. Hey aunties, do y'all give a damn that Beyonce showed up to the Taylor Swift era's uh premiere? <laughs> 
Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Why? Yes. I give a damn. And I give a damn because now that Taylor Swift has posted about Beyonce being her favorite, okay, we can squash it. We can squash it, all right? I don't want, I'm tired of Swifties being like, well, Taylor Swift, did it, did it, did it. no, she literally said, <laughs> Beyonce inspired her, bitch. She literally told you everything she given you comes from Beyonce, okay? I don't want to <laughs> hear it. I don't want to hear it no more. I don't want to hear it no more. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna drop the beef. I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna look at. You. I'm gonna look at <laughs> the white said, people like I'm this. I'm going now. high. There, y'all can stay low, but I'm going high. She's, I'm, I'm going look, high vibrational on this on this topic. <laughs> rested, rested. Okay, she up here. I'm just gone. Why do you care, Blossom? You want to know what? Y'all remember years ago when Kanye West got up on stage during Taylor Swift's and spoke the whole truth and nothing and but the truth. It? Yeah, and Beyonce gave her moment to Taylor. I'll mm. always remember that in my head. So I was just like seeing Beyonce show up for Taylor. It's like that's true womanhood and that's true yeah. solidarity. And I love mm. that. And Beyonce is a Virgo child. These Virgos <laughs> are something else. But they, but yes, I love man, they are. Because <laughs> my mom was a Virgo, so I was born by a Virgo. But. <laughs> I love her humility because it's so, because Beyonce is the type of person, it's like, no matter how famous she gets, she's so humble. Mm -hmm. And I love her collaborating with other artists and her being able to be there for Taylor. I thought that was one of the most sweetest things. It just really shows Beyonce's heart, soul, and spirit. And I love it. Yeah. Do you give a damn to Juan? No. <laughs> we knew. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I just find it interesting that, like, white people have this, like, colonizer gene where they just want to colonize everything. Really? Yeah. You don't say. Yes. His, his, <laughs> this is historically accurate. <laughs> let's, let's be clear. <laughs> and so when it comes, I can only, I can only imagine how this ends up getting spun by all the Swifties. Like, oh, see how gracious uh, Taylor Swift is that she created a forum where Beyonce can participate and try to take credit for Beyonce, Beyonce's accolades as through the conduit that is Taylor Swift, and I'm just not with that. So, um, <laughs> is it fine that she went? Yeah, go support people. Beautiful gowns, lovely Beautiful gowns. gowns. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the at the end of the day, it it doesn't it to me. This is a this is a this is a non-factor because this really isn't going to change the dynamic. But what I do appreciate is Beyonce is so either unaware or unbothered by all the stuff that is going on and she just does what she's just the moving ladder. how she's moving and yeah. what i appreciate so much about the space that she's in is she's created such a great platform for black queer people and black queer voices where, where, wherever she's going she's bringing that with her as an ally and i appreciate that so I care about it from a Beyonce yeah. and the, the work that she's doing, but do I give a damn that she went and showed up at a movie theater to for some? No, <laughs> pass on that. <laughs> I give a damn just because a I want more fashion from Beyonce and she gave it to me. <laughs> that bitch showed up and said I'm a show out still nonetheless. <laughs> and <laughs> now because Beyonce real G's move, move in silence like lasagna. You know she did that shit because it's going to help her movie boost box office as well because now all these Swifties are like, oh, Beyonce came, da, 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 so we can go see Beyonce now too. Get that money, girl. Get that money. <laughs> Look, she's going to be gone for the next five years, right. so she's going to be out here getting getting as much exposure and, pipe, yeah, hu hu and, and piping up her projects as much as she can because then she's going to be gone. She might pop out two or three more kids. She's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, one more because you know she's like the number four. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, all right, aunties, do we give a damn that Jada Pinkett and Will Smith haven't been married since 1972? Shut the fuck up. I'm not playing with you. Not 1972. I am deceased. <laughs> who gives a damn and who doesn't give a damn? I don't give a damn. I'm going to start it off. 
let's just continue with let's just continue with this because at the end of the day, this is all. Here's what I find interesting is that this is PR 101. Oh God, yeah. This is mm-hmm. PR 101. So all these little spicy gems of things that are in her book or whatever. This is all part of the strategy to just get people talking. It's the same thing we were talking about earlier in terms of like, you know, debating for content or debating for entertainment. What she's doing is debating for entertainment, getting everybody hyped up. You know, like y- y'all seen the memes, like, you know, <laughs> Jada talking about how too. she sold drugs, how, you know, Tupac has al- alopecia. Like, girl, <laughs> girl. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let me tell you, black people have ran off with this. I ran. <laughs> look, what I what I love about our people is our our ability to take some shit and to turn it in some shit. <laughs> like, because it really, because it ain't really shit. <laughs> like, I feel bad for people who are pre ordering the book who are actually gonna read it because I'm sure the book gonna be boring. The memes <laughs> and, and everything else is gonna be better than the book. I just already know. I just already know. But I'm I'm with the people who who said, uh, "Can Will and Jada take us out the group chat?" Yes, please take me out the group chat. That is, I'm done. I I don't need to hear no more. I don't need to see no more. I'm good. Like, yeah, at, at this point, y'all just y'all just doing the most for nothing, for nothing. Like, y'all not booked, so you trying to stay busy. Blossom, you give a damn. No, I don't give two. No, I don't give two dams. But here's the thing, y'all. I like to be a little nosy, so I went over to Will Smith's Instagram, <laughs> and, and you know, I noticed that he limited his comments too. Yeah, so but did. But I, but, but you know, the thing is with with Jada. I used to watch Red Table Talk all the time, and I thought that was really a healing space for her and and Willow and 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 they and her mom or whatever to really talk about what they need to talk about. I just think it's unfair to Will. It just really looks unfair to Will. And you know, he's a Libra like me, just saying. (laughs) Because I feel like some things are being revealed against his, it just feels like it's against his will or against his, his, I don't know. It's It's just, you know, and Jada keeps talking about how she doesn't want a divorce, right? And it's just like divorce does not mean failure. It doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that, you know, times change. Feelings change. And it's okay to separate in that way. Obviously, they would be really great friends. That's not the issue here. But I just feel like she's dragging him through hurt, opening up their personal lives to everybody and everybody. And I was watching Amanda Seals uh, video the other day. It's like, why y'all got all of us in it? You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think to a certain degree, like I encourage people to to live their truth and express what they need to express. But it's like, come on, mm-hmm. come yeah. on. Yeah, then I, that girl went on you, Hoda and them talking about that mess and Hoda trying <laughs> to dig Hoda for tea and, and, and Zeta ain't giving, you know, like I don't have time for all of that. It's like, what's, it's like you said, <laughs> PR stunt. I, that's why I give a damn because I'm like, why people been doing this shit forever? I'm glad we got a prominent <laughs> black couple doing the same damn shit and profiting off this bullshit. Keep doing this shit, Jada and Will, because we all in it. We got an opinion, and that's what they wanted. Shit, like whether pa- Paltrow and all them did it with their conscious uncoupling, bitch, y'all conscious uncoupling too. <laughs> shit, keep that shit going. <laughs> But I you know, know what, what kind of you know, Okay, you know what? I, I didn't see that. I did not see that at first. But you know what? You are absolutely but right. Seriously. And on top of that, too, you know something that don't get talked about, especially in the black community, is the even the idea of things like open marriages, right? Uh, or open period. relationships, right? Like in the queer, in the queer community, that's a normalized thing. But now we have a yeah. a cis yeah. straight black couple, you know, who are having conversations about doing that openly. And, and breaking the rules. Break the shit out these rules so we can see there's other options in relationships. Like, that's yeah. what I like out this damn thing. Because people are like, oh my god, I can't believe they haven't been married in seven years. And don't care. You ain't in the relationship. Mm-hmm. If Jada and Will still said it's, it's working for somehow, some way for us, 
I ain't give, I don't give a damn. Right. So get that one again. Like I said, Beyonce, like, get that money. Will and Jada, get that money. <laughs> How do you have a conversation with your kids, though? That's what I want to know. I'm they just grow. very curious about they the grow. conversation yeah. that you have with your kids, you know, about the things that are going to – I mean, if, if Red Table Talk was the, the, the boilerplate, it's the template for how we're supposed to, as a family, work through issues, if that is the template. I'm just very curious about the conversation that was being had, you know, because, like – the last thing I don't know. I mean, how on Jada's uh, Instagram, they was there for her book opening. Like they was helping. Like, yeah, mom, we read the book. Good, congratulations. So clearly, they must be cool because they getting that coin too. <laughs> yeah, because here's the thing: if you really think about it, Willow and Jaden in particular, because I also followed the oldest son too, because he's just cute. Yeah, that's right. But like yeah, Will yeah. and Jaden, Willow and Jaden, they're they're kind of free spirited kids. If you really think about it, like Jaden mm-hmm. out here wearing skirts and dresses and. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm quite sure they're into polyamory. Like, I'm just like, you know, like, I just, I I think the conversation, because I know I was reading something about how they felt sorry for Will. I also think it's a PR stunt, too. Just period. (laughs) Will is laughing to the bank. Yeah, he said I can't. Like, look, I he said I'm not going to the Oscars anytime soon, so I might as well get some, get some enjoyment out of this. <laughs> that's true. But then that's wow. the thing that, that's so <laughs> weird. It's like if y'all haven't been together since 2016, why the hell did you get up and slap Chris that Rock in the face? Weird. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. But that uh, but that shit yeah, looked fake as thing, hell man. anyway. So but that could have been the, the whole. But then the remember August Alcina spilled tea. Yeah. But August Alcina was spilling that tea, though. He sure was. Yeah. He was giving us the ultimate truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The math is math and now. August like. was back there breaking her back. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's the one that's getting permission. destroyed. <laughs> but meanwhile, he's the one that's he getting destroyed. Said, <laughs> yeah, we... You know what? The black community, we, we do we do owe August a, a, an apology because Sorry we tore to this August man. up. Yeah. Sorry to this man. Sorry to this we man did. here. We did. Sorry, August. You was right. You yep. was right. <laughs> no Jesse Smollett here. Damn. <laughs> um, do we give a damn about the Tyler Water Challenge? Yeah. Hey, now, what is yeah, that? Go. Go the dance. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, the dance. Goes, boom, boom, boom. Hey. And then she spilled the water on the button. She popping that shit. Hey, twerk that day. You ain't seen it. The ty- You know that song, Water? Oh, the, How's it the go? Make me swear. Make me hurt. I don't know all the words. Make me lose Child. my ah. breath. Make ah. me water. Ah. Oh, it's a bop of a song. It's a bop of a damn song. But now they're doing the water <clears throat> challenge. We didn't already send in the family group chat for Thanksgiving to be prepared because we're going to be doing it at Thanksgiving. We're going to be recording it. We're going to have a little bottles of water. We got look. You better reach with that left right. hand. Look, you better watch. Right. Ow, and then you bitch, better tap, de- 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 tap, de- 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. Ow, bitch. Come on now. <laughs> I'm like, that's my kind of chance. I give a damn. I'm like, shit. I can't, I can't make it bounce as good as they do in that video. <laughs> Look. But well, I'm going to give it a good damn try. <laughs> For me, it's the like hips. It's, it. it's the rotating the hips. And yeah. the shaking of the ass at the same time. That's what I'm like. It's wild. They look I can only do one of the yeah. one of the I'll other. I have to check that out. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. The only is it complaint a I have trend? is that it's a TikTok trend. Yeah, well, it, it is, started yeah. with her at like some concert of her singing it, and they did it on stage. And ever since she did it on stage, they like, oh shit, like that's the shit right there. My only complaint is <laughs> oh. in the actual music video. They really like. That song is such a moment to have literally a viral dance craze outside of even that. Mm-hmm. And they didn't really have like a whole choreographed moment. Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing I have to pick about that video because the video's hot. Well, I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. you could have like had like a nice little 16 count and we would have ate that shit up because that song is such a bop. And you could have done all this African shit and then <laughs> in with the sweat. And then, oh, we would have lost our shit. And they only had like a little folk out <laughs> moment of it. I'm like, the fuck is this who, who directed this <laughs> <laughs> i actually i give it i give a damn for any of these like dance um challenges that require coordination because as a as a black who does not have coordination who does not have who doesn't even have two left feet she ain't got no feet just just knees that's it <laughs> 
<laughs> I appreciate seeing it. I appreciate seeing it. I, I, I aspire to one day be able to emulate that, but I just can't. So I just have to appreciate from afar. So I love that people get to show off oh, well. that talent because, honey, <laughs> ain't not everybody got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, do we give a damn about the Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift fiasco and their dating? You know, I'll say this. And, and, and people said it online, too. I don't know what, which means my thought. But he went from, that's a fine-ass man, but that's a fine-ass white man, to that's a white man that, like, he'll pull you up. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> And one Swift. <laughs> and one Swift. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and all I would say is, because I followed him because I used to have a big old crush on him. Oh, he's and fine I, and, still, though. He, and <laughs> no, nah, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> um, especially because, I mean, his, his wife was black or his girlfriend was black. And to yeah. hear about, you know, the, the cheating and all the other shit that he had been doing and stuff like that. Yeah, that is. Nah, I'm, I'm sorry. What you're not going to do is disrespect a black woman <laughs> in front of my eyes and think hey, I'm going to be there and be story. like, <laughs> absolutely That's not. So you guys to go. You were, you barely got an invite to the cookout. Nigga, now you gone. Don't Rescinded. stay coming back. <laughs> oh, Rescinded. So mm. and you and you know what you can tell he, his car his his car been revoked because look, look where he ended up at that part <laughs> the opposite end yep Damn. there you the go he will never have collard greens he will never have collard greens in his life candy yams damn because she ain't eating that look at that body she ain't eating that yeah she the, she the raisin potato salad girl look right. you right. Mm. <clears throat> And I can tell by the look at everybody's faces, nobody give a damn. No, no. <laughs> Beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's another one? Man, some of this stuff, like I initially wrote down weeks ago, do we give a damn that Simone Biles has another skill uh, named after her? Hell yes. Yes. Hell yes. 100%. Oh, yeah. I mean, 100%. absolutely. I mean, five? Five skills. Bitches. Honey. Bitches, some bitches ain't got none. <laughs> Ain't got none. She got right. five. I got five on it. Hey, come on now. <laughs> she out here letting the girls know. She out here letting them know that she's still that bitch. She been that bitch. And she gonna always be that bitch. <laughs> I so appreciate trailblazers like Simone. I love her. Who encourage black youth to get involved in sports that we have not historically seen a presence in. And so yeah. the fact that this is like the Serena Williams, um, like she's following Effect. Serena Williams' footsteps is what I really wanted to say, and that she's breaking yeah. barriers in so many ways, and it's it's showing that there, that that we as a people have so much more skill and capability and talent in these spaces that when we're provided the opportunity and we see representation. It means it it encourages us to get involved, and so having five skills named after her just further solidifies her relevancy going forward and the impact that she, as a black you know woman, has had on that particular sport. Yes, well, awesome. you give a damn. I do. I just love Simone, and and you know to piggyback, like Simone is such a trailblazer. And we know how difficult it is it is for, for black women in sports. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, she's just so talented. She's so smart. And she is, like, that it girl. She's that, she's that bitch. Like, she mm -hmm. really is. She's so consistent. She's so good in her craft. And she's so focused. And I love seeing young, beautiful black women being able to live in their truth and being in their power and really loving what they do. Mm. And I, I, I used to watch how people would try to tear her down, but she didn't let that stop her. Mm -mm. I love that. I Anything, I'm rooting for all the black people this season. Look, I'm period. just saying. Look, period. and on top of that, like, let's be honest, this is the first time that the world all around women's podium was all black women mm -hmm. all yeah. black Ooh, women mm -hmm. like when i tell Rebecca you from brazil was she was doing the damn thing <laughs> look yeah and they, <laughs> and, they, 
And they tried to create the narrative of them not liking each other or anything like that. They ha ha and key key in yeah. on the side. They ha ha key key in with the um, home girl from France as well too. Yeah. That trains with them in the U.S. Yep. Like they they understand community. The, the optics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One one thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. No no they're not going they're not going to have us do this. Mm-hmm. No. And, you, and you know, here's how 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 dope you are at your your profession. I forget what year they changed to this system now. Now they're saying, there's a Russian coach that's saying, oh, we need to put more emphasis on artistry and things like that in gymnastics again when they moved to the current system because they couldn't distinguish between who was really good and everything. And now you have someone that's so dominant for so long. Now you want to go back to the old way? Bitch, sit down. Have several mm-hmm. seats. <laughs> Like no, don't put don't put step rhythm. Your, on. Step your game up, then. <laughs> don't don't put rhythm as a criteria, bitch. <laughs> and, let's be honest. It's, it does. That is not a good strategy. Is, it's not even rhythm. It's not even rhythm. It's literally just being more flexible or being That's being it. being yeah. tinier. That's honestly all it is. Because it ain't rhythm. Because let me tell you, baby, right. they listen to classical music, baby. They not yeah. concerned much about rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. Do you give a damn? Do you give a damn that they found Tupac's murderer? Ooh, I do. I, um, and it's only because even as a kid, you know, like any one of y'all millennials, no T, no shade. Who's a yeah. millennial here? <laughs> do I say it? Oh, <laughs> do I say it? Mm. Because yeah. y'all ever hear that rumor in the 90s, especially when Tupac first die that oh all of a sudden he faked his death and he lives in Africa or something like that. Did you ever yeah. hear those rumors? Yeah. Sure did. Yeah, and I was sure just kinda did. like I was just kinda like as a kid, I was just like, for Tupac to be dead, why is so much new music coming out with him? You know what I mean? <laughs> and when I cause Jada's talked so much about Tupac or whatever, but it's really interesting to know because that's been a mystery for so long in black culture. Of course of course people probably already knew. And yeah. people were just too scared to talk about it. But, you know, I, I love crime mystery. Like, that's kind of like my thing. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, I think it fills the gap of history a little bit. Like, um, mm-hmm. when it comes to his murder. Because it was just like, like that whole backstory. Because I think, and, I'm, and I may be wrong about this or whatever. But weren't Tupac and Biggie beefing at one point? Mm-hmm. Like, East Coast, oh, West Coast? West Coast. Mm-hmm. And it was almost mm-hmm. like said, a life, I or fucked a life bitch. Kind of He said, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat... Or he said, that's why I fucked your girl, you fat bitch. <laughs> or something crazy. <laughs> I knew it was something like that, yeah. Like, I was too young to remember the beef, but I learned about it more when I became an adult. So it was just yeah. kind of like, you know, it's just... Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I'm... I'm really curious. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, you give a damn? I don't know if I give a damn. I'm leaning more towards no because I feel like how real is this? And also mm. there is something interesting about the mystique of not having this situation solved. There's just something there that if this was truly the case, this nigga been sitting low for this long and just and all of this just happened to, ha- to come well, out he's the at one the that same time. Ultimately told on himself. But this nigga been sitting on this shit for this long. <laughs> like 30 years, just, 30 just, years. You could have, you could have waited. <laughs> you could, you or might you have never said anything. Like, to, it, to me, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I question the motivation. I question whether or not this really happened. I, you know, so much of what we see ain't what it is. For all we know, this could be some person yeah. who took a payout to say that he did this and it got bought up by the media and da 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 da. You know, as a dis- as a as a political and social distraction technique to to get us away from talking about other more serious issues. So, do I sure. give a damn? I don't. I don't really. I don't think so. <laughs> if that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell, you give a damn, boo? No. <laughs> Terrell, do you give a damn? <laughs> I do. I do. Just because <clears throat> I, I think about A, I mean, there's just like the cultural impact, but then B, 
even though his mother has passed now at this point, there's still family members that like probably like, man, I want this shit wrapped up. Like, they get maybe a little closer yeah. to a closure. I don't know. It's been so long that does it really truly give you the closure? And maybe there is still some like, is it truly him? Is it not like you're saying, Dewan? But that's the part where like my brain goes is just like the family piece is just like, do they get maybe a little more closure out of it? And if so, then yeah, I give a damn. Um, but yeah, it's been so long. And honestly, the, the guy has been speaking all, over the years that he did it. They just, the police at a certain point just didn't have the, 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 the evidence the, the, to, to do it. And I don't know what's changed in the evidence piece. So that's a, a little curious piece. Like what don't change 30 years later that now you got the evidence on the same grainy ass, uh, video cameras footage that you had from the casino in 1990, mm-hmm. whatever, four mm-hmm. or five. Um, so that's the piece mm-hmm. that I'm like, no, no, but I give a damn. It, it's been such a big, like, I don't know, cliffhanger for so long that does have some kind of maybe closure, even if it's maybe faked closure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's move on from it. So, um, And before we get out here, though, quickly, I, I saw this coming across on CNN. Um, India's top court uh, has declined to legalize same-sex marriage um, in the LGBTQ ruling over there. So I know for a while that we had like a lot of Indian listeners, um, yeah. and this kind of shifted over time. I'm not sure what program they, they kind of like, got rid of over there so it's kind of declined over time but if there are additional indian listeners that are over there or even here in the u.s or wherever in the world we're thinking of you it sounds like they are at least the ruling also says something where they're at least trying to protect the lgbtq community the the supreme court said we can't create law all we can do is interpret it the, the law that comes in and then it's the policymakers to be like no okay same-sex marriage is could be passed and things like that so i don't think it's like a complete slam in the face Yes, it, it would have been cool if maybe they could have reinterpreted the law and say, yes, you could get married or whatever. But um, at least it, the, the, the windows at least cracked, it seems like. But I, I know there was a lot of folks watching this hoping that marriage would become legal today. Um, and at least the, the, the day of us recording this. So we'll continue to kind of keep an eye on that. But we just mm-hmm. don't. We have a lot of LGBTQIA plus community members out there that, uh, that we're thinking of you as well. Um, so Blossom. We love you, boo. You know yes. you're I love y'all, too. Um, Thank y'all for having me. <laughs> Come back whenever you want to. Hit us up. Be like, bitch, I need to get I on there and say some shit. Yes. Come on. Your, the door's always open for you. I love. would love to. Thank y'all for this healing space. I feel so refreshed. I love y'all oh. so much. Thank oh. you. We love you. Oh, right you know now. we love yeah. you. Um, <laughs> and, let, and let the community know where they can find you. Also, like your astrology stuff, all your businesses, yes. your 15 jobs. Let them know where they can find you and pay you. <laughs> yes, honey. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Blossom C. Brown. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, Blossom C. Brown. And if you go to my Instagram on my activist page, Tell All Blossom is my active is my astrology, spiritual wisdom, tarot page, TikTok, Coach Blossom C. Brown. Hit me up. I do do readings. Buy a reading from your girl. Support Black trans women and hit me up. I know that's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna get a reading. I need one. So I'm coming. Yeah, give me up. I might have to, I might have to hit you up after you, after yeah, this for a reading. Got me like your paid <laughs> tarot card reading. Yeah, listen, my birthday is. Reading. I'm quite sure by the time this post or whatever, my birthday is actually coming up in a few days. So I'm just like happy birthday! Come on, yeah. 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 I want to say happy birthday, birthday to, to you, you, you too. Hey, happy birthday, guys. Thanks, if you, if you know what for her birthday, go, go get go get some readings. Go pay her, pay her what you owe her. Come on, and at least <laughs> so, 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 like follow her and shit. Come on now, bless her with all that. Yes, yes. Dewan, Jarrell, anything else on your hearts and minds, booze? I'm gonna have no, to get, but I do love being black. I love being black. This yeah. right here, I needed. Like I'm feeling like it was healing. I needed this. Yes. So. Aww. I'm going to have to hit you up us. after this um, Blossom for a reading because, honey, 2023 <laughs> has been very interesting. I got you, baby. I got you. <laughs> I want to see, is, is there a move I to Brazil no, in my worry, future, honey? <laughs> right. Not a move to Brazil. We can, we'll right. do this here across the street. <laughs> like, we'll you. manifest this yes, shit. Yes, that way yes. I got a place to go stay. Okay. <laughs> we got a place to go stay. Period. Because 
I'm, I'm trying to look at them Brazilian menses. And on that note, community, <laughs> wash your hands, your legs, and your ass, and we'll see you next week. Bye, <laughs> Bye. y'all. <laughs> Bye.